I am one of the programmers, uh, Maria, and I'm here with the director and producers of the film Holy Biker um, that will have its international premiere in the first film competition tonight. And now we're going to have a few questions about the movie. Um, Omero, mm. can you tell me uh, two words about your grandfather? About my grandfather? Two words? Uh, I loved him very much. <laughs> he was a really uh, important person for, for me. And um, and, uh, and that's it. That's it. A lot. A, a lot of the stories that I, that I, that the movie has, uh, it came from him. Like so a lot of the, the stuff that the bad guy tells, it came from the stories that my grandfather uh, told me. So he was. He he's a, a great inspiration for me, as a person, as a, and as a filmmaker. And a, that's it. <laughs> I know it took you a very long while to get the film into a stage that you can actually make it. Why? Why? What's the reason behind taking that long time? Well, uh, I wrote uh, short stories with these characters, and in, and in this back uh, back back drop, uh, twenty years ago when I was uh, eighteen years old. And then uh, I put it back. So uh, it took another 15 years when I went to, to my drawer and took it to, to make a script. And then it took six years uh, uh, looking for financial and money to, to put the, the movie uh, uh, up. <laughs> and that's it, that's, that's, what, that's why actually. Because I, I, I put it back for for a while, uh, and then and then the other, and the other stuff is the financial stuff, but that's it. And, and it, it was great uh, actually to to take this time because uh, it got mature, you know. Uh, it changed a lot. Uh, it started much more crazy, and it had giants, and it was a fantasy, really a lot of Nietzsche and a lot of. <laughs> Stuff uh, it, it, it does have niche yet, uh, but it's now it's it's conceived. It's in the middle of the <laughs> of the story. It is easy. it isn't in our face, but uh, that's it. That's it. <laughs> uh, one can see or maybe even look for a lot of uh, influence from uh, B cinema uh, filmmakers like Rodriguez or or maybe uh, even a touch of uh, Mad Max, how much actually it has influenced you as a director? How much it was in your mind when you were making the film? Well, the, there are two uh, sides of this story. One is, is the necessity. I, I needed to, to do a movie with the, the money that I had and the time that I had. So I, I went back to the 70s movies uh, action 70s movies where without uh, a lot of resources and and I watched a lot of movies like the first Mad Max for, for example uh, and I don't know some uh, movies from uh, oh my god what is the name of that guy I, I, I say a lot of the uh, oh my god well, he, he made Wild Bunch uh, uh, what is the name of him? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. No, but this, his name is great to... to bon, whatever. Uh, I'll, I'll put it again. The, the, I'll answer it again. There are two sides. One is, was the necessity to do it in, in, in so... Uh, uh, I, I didn't have much time to do it, to film. So I went to the 70s movies, uh, of action movies. To see how they edited, how they, what, are, what were the solutions that they had, with uh, not much uh, post-production or something like that. So, in this sense, the editing and some of the solutions that you see in the movie are uh, 70 solutions, uh, like Mad Max, mm -hmm. the first one, of course. <laughs> the last one doesn't have any sense. Doesn't have any any relation. Uh, and Robert Rodriguez, I think that he went, he, he does that also. He, he used a lot of, he, he does a lot 
with uh, with Lido, with the Lido resources. Um, and the other, uh, the other, the other thing is that I love this kind of movies, and I love uh, Sergio Leone, and I love uh, movies with this, with the rhythm that uh, Holy Biker has, and, and I went there also, um, and uh, that's it. <laughs> uh, it took uh, many, many years for you to make the film, but how about the producers? Uh, how long have you been attached to the project uh, when you got the script uh, on your table? Uh, did it take a while? It's quite an unusual project for me, at least from Brazil, so I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it wasn't that easy. No. Uh, uh, it took, um, took us five years to finance the film, you know, to raise the money. And then uh, when we got together, uh, it was, you know, all the, the money, everything was already there. So it went really fast, the pre-production pre and the, the shooting. We shot in six weeks in the northeast of Brazil. It was not an easy place. Um, it was, uh, you know, nature is strong there. So we had uh, uh, to travel like 40 minutes every time to, you know, to set the film in this tough places, you know, um, it was very hot and, you know, not, not, uh, friendly. yeah, friendly, <laughs> <laughs> and it's snakes and, you know, it's nature, um, but everything went really well, I mean, we had like, a, a, we finished on time and on budget, Nobody got hurt, <laughs> and it was uh, difficult scenes to make in Brazil because uh, we're not used to make these kind of films there. So we have just uh, one uh, group of people that can do action scenes. In mm -hmm. maybe now it's getting more people too. So it was uh, it was difficult to put that crew together also. <laughs> Now when the film is ready, and I know that uh, it has already uh, been showed in uh, Brazil, do you think you've uh, changed the landscape for young filmmakers, or what type of films there might come after this film? Do you inf have you influenced people? Do they feel that they want to try to make more movies like that? I think there is there is a movement in Brazil, um, like a lot of films are being made. Um, so it's becoming diverse and uh, independently. I mean, we are part of this movement that we can also do fiction, we can also do yeah. fantasy, we can do uh, genre movies, horror. horror. So there are a lot of people trying, you know, other genres because. It, and the co after the, the period that uh, Brazil start making comedies, um, which is, in a sense, easier to make because it's much cheaper, uh, people are trying different kind of films, and I think we are part of that, not that we influenced. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe, maybe uh, Holy Biker, uh, proved that it's possible to produce action movies in Brazil even with low budget because it's a very low budget for an action movie so in this sense I think it uh, it helps other filmmakers to to produce it Sam Peckinpah there's a <laughs> ah, Sam Peckinpah of course uh, there's a lot of uh, music used in the film, and there are songs. Uh, how much uh, trouble went into clearing them, or you had a very strong vision from the beginning that this is the music you want to use? Yes, I, actually, uh, when I wrote the, the script, I thought that the soundtrack would be all punk and punk rock. And then uh, when I talked with the, with, this, with the music guys, they, they presented to me this electronic... Uh, beat and this, and this pop music 
and I and I love it. I love it because it is aggressive. It is as aggressive as punk, uh, uh, but it's but it has this this beat that I think that uh, fits with the with the with the story, and uh, the music that they composed. It is great also because uh, oh, and all the music, uh, the, the electronic and the composed music, uh, they use a lot of elements from, from the region, from, from the northeast of Brazil, from the, the backlands. So this mix, for me, it was, it was great. Also to, to, break, the, the, to, to break the vision, the, the common vision from, from that uh, region, you know? Uh, regularly, people when shoots there, when shoots in the northeast, they use only the regional music. Mm -hmm. They they make it very very traditional, and uh, and the soundtrack in this movie is really strange, I, well, especially for the Brazilians. <laughs> uh, and uh, last but not least, uh, the main cast of the film. You can't not, not talk about him and actually the whole ensemble around him. How maybe you can uh, put a little bit of light? How did you find the wonderful lead, and how all this uh, ensemble came together? Well, the first person that the first actor that uh, entered the movie that got got in the movie with us was Kawa Heimo, the the protagonist, and um, oh, it was really simple. I, I showed him the script. He he thought it was really uh, different and. He was curious to 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 know how how we we would we would put it together and and shoot it, and uh, he hoped up in he hoped up, uh, and then the other the other actors, they came in in the last year of the, of the in our pre production, uh, most of them was uh, invited, there was no uh, tests or or something like that. Or anything like that, and um, and actually they came all through him. When I when I had him, I, I understood uh, what kind of, of people would be in that movie. Uh, if it was another a different actor, completely different actor, all the rest of the people would be completely different. I think, and um, yeah. <laughs> and. Uh to cut it with a nice uh, finishing question, how has Tallinn been treating you coming here to this uh, murder? Feel good? Yeah. Feels dark? Feels yeah. feels terrible without the sun or it's interesting? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we arrived yesterday and until now it's, everything is perfect. It's, 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 well, we are really well treated and we are really happy. We, we went to a great restaurant yesterday uh, called uh, Cezanne. It was great. I we I ate the pork. It was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. And um, the and the city is beautiful. The city, yes. And sunny and yes, yes. And really cold. Yeah. I love. How do you say night? Oh. Uh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> in Brazil, in Portuguese, oh, it's like oh, you know. <laughs> All right, it's our pleasure to have uh, filmmakers who have actually fought snakes and uh, sandstorms to make a film called Holy, Holy Biker and uh, premiere this at Black Knight Film Festival. Thank you for coming. I hope we have a great premiere tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>